NASDAQ jumps back 200 points, or it's not 200 points, 322 points, or like Peter Tuchman would say, we got two handles, right? Dow Jones jumps up 435 points, the S&P 500 up 75 points as well. So anyway, the Dow Jones and S&P 500 both up 1%, and we have the NASDAQ roaring back those tech companies that I was telling you guys and girls about that's probably um, having a big sell-off, that were having a big sell-off, that you probably could find some bargains, are back now at 2.69%. Just last week, I was saying, welcome to the bear market. Are we out of the bear market? Without further ado, you know, I got to bring in my guest, Uncle James, who's coming in all the way live from New Jersey, a.k.a. New York, Wall Street. You know, it's right across the pond for them. Um, so anyway, without further ado, James, how's it going today? How are you today, Mr. Prince? I'm doing uh, pretty good. Yeah. I'm, I'm actually out in Alexandria, Louisiana today. I'm on the road right now. So, but definitely glad to see you on. We've had a great day on the market. And now people are saying, hey, the bear market is a thing of the past. What do you think? Is this a dead cat bounce or this is a real roar back? Well, there's something known in bear markets called like a bear trap where you you get fairly big rallies back. Uh, and then suddenly you can get hammered again. I would say, if from my experience, it just hasn't. I, I just haven't seen enough people cry yet, and and I like I just don't think we've gotten hammered enough. Uh, and I think right now you're getting you're getting like a bounce, and this is very characteristic of bear markets where you have these sort of choppy markets. They don't often when we say bear markets, and a lot of the newer investors right away just think that means the market just goes down, 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 and doesn't do anything. Um, but there's there's a lot of volatility in that that downward bias. So we're going to get some leaps. Um, I, for me, I wouldn't, until we get back to where we were, let's say, what, what, I don't know when this thing started at the beginning of May. I'm trying to guess when it, or maybe the, the beginning of the, the end of April. Um, until we get back to where we were, I, I don't even, right now, I would say we're still in a bear market. And I think we're going to stay that way through most of the summer into the end of October. Okay. So now you, you brought this bear trap. What is a bear trap? You kind of explained it there. Uh, is this, I've kind of heard the notion of a dead cat bounce or a bear yeah. trap. What is a bear trap? Well, bear trap is like, for example, first let's, let's, let's just get a little focus. For, for most people, there's really two kinds of bear markets. There's this sort of systematic breakdown like in 1987 or maybe in 1929 I, I was contrary to popular belief i was not around in those days um but in 87 i was around and we just got hammered like it was the market just collapsed it was like a it was it was brutal um however there's another kind of uh, bear market where like i would say in 2000 where the market sold down and then rallied back into a what I would call a huge bear trap, sucked a lot of people back into the market ar around the beginning of the summer, like about now. And then the market sold off huge after that. And it just kept going down and down and down and down. It just didn't, it didn't bounce back at all for, for months and months. It took, it took quite a while to work its way out of there. Um, in a classic bear trap, after you've had a lot of selling, what's happened is a lot of investors, like in the 1990s, was probably the most prevalent. But recently, I see a lot of this is people buy on the dip. You get a sell off and people are confident they can come right in. They buy at a low and the next day it's going to be higher. Well, until that psychology gets broken, um, that's when you know you're at the bottom of your market and you're going to get these periodic fairly big rallies where we like, what was it last week? We had uh, five days in a row where the market went up. And then uh, we started off this week where I think Monday was also up. Maybe I have my days wrong, but um, we've had some good moves, uh, but who knows? We could go into next week and suddenly there's a whole new game. Like today they're talking about Saudi Arabia is going to pump our oil and, you know, we're going to, we're going to put on those win buttons from Gerald Ford. They're going to dust those off and we're going to whip inflation now and we're going to do all these things. Um, I don't think any of this stuff is going to work and Saudi Arabia couldn't pump more oil if they wanted to. So it's none of this is going to make any difference. And I think when the market gets wind of that, um, then we're going to go back into a selling. I, I think there's some relief this week because China went on lockdown. 
Um, and the bigger, a lot of people always go, does a bear market mean we're going to have a recession? Well, like bear markets, recessions are bad and are bad or worse, right? Um, so I think we're going into kind of a, a slowdown, I, a, a mild recession, a slowdown. I think what scares a lot of people is continued lockdowns globally for COVID. That would, could get us maybe in a bigger recession um, and maybe some major, major like oil shock or some kind of supply chain shock could really knock us around. Um, I think right now, most people are expecting the Fed to raise rates quite a bit. So I think that's starting to get factored into the market. And it may not be as negative on the market as it appears like as, it, as you would think it would be, because people are thinking they raise rates, they're going to tame inflation. That's good in the long run. So the market may react more positively than that then we're kind of conditioned to think right now. Okay. Now you have people saying, they're saying the optimistic reports are coming out saying uh, latest CPI report put inflation at 8.3%. They're saying inflation has been topped. Those, those interest rates that you just hit on, everybody's expecting a, 0.5, a 50 point base, base points to be hit by the, uh, the Federal Reserve. So they're saying the market has kind of already baked in those Federal Reserve interest rates. They're saying inflation has topped. And they're saying we're going to increase um, the uh, input of oil, right? The output of oil, you know, from Saudi Arabia, from the OPEC and things like that. So now yeah. you're seeing the market take this rally. Is this a is this is a bull talking or just some bull crap? Which well, this is this is I think this is the BS thing. I I'm going to tell you right now. What we have in, in the old days, we had we had trading systems that weren't as efficient. Now we have super efficient trading systems, but we have huge gaps in information. What people don't want to tell you is, first of all, Saudi Arabia is not going to say publicly no to a U.S. president, no matter what they ask. They're going to say yes. That doesn't mean they're going to do anything. And the problem is, after 10 years of underinvestment in oil infrastructure, we're actually probably the first time in my lifetime that Saudi Arabia cannot just press a button and pump more oil. Um, there's a lot of ways to get more oil in the U.S., but it seems that the current administration wants to block those ways, doesn't want to let it happen. Uh, to some degree, we've had some relief because the Permian Basin that's in Texas, that's that West Texas crude that we always see, WTI, uh, they've found a lot of new ways to get oil out of there. So there seems to be a lot more oil there than uh, sort of uh, technology has created more opportunities to get oil out of the ground in that area. Um, and Texas obviously is very friendly to oil drilling. If you go next door to Mex New Mexico, you can't like they, they won't approve a lease to drill oil almost no matter what. Um, so I think I think a lot of this is sort of a hopey hopey right now. And this sounds good. It was like when the Biden administration released um, used the strategic petroleum reserve to release some oil. Um, those are minimal. That's like a drop in a bucket. In the long run, it's probably a big negative. Uh, in the short run, it really doesn't do a whole lot. It's just something to say so that they can say, hey, we're doing something about this. Um, I would say, I think, you know, they missed the boat. And I think, and I think Janet Yellen finally recognized that she was really off. I mean, she was the queen of QE2, that quantitative easing and that printing money or helicopter finance, whatever you want to call it. Um, so now to see her admit and say, hey, it wasn't transitory, inflation was serious. I mean, anybody who's around from the old days, a guy like me who lived through the 70s, we all know if you have a catastrophe and you got to print a lot of money and you have super easy money, eventually you got to pay that bill. You got to pay for it. And now the bill is starting to come due. And I think unless the government, I mean, there's some things they could really do that would mitigate this whole thing. But I don't see this government, this current administration making those moves. So I think I, I think we're we're in for a ride here. So you think that at times are going to get worse before they get better? Yeah, I think we're going to have a rough summer. I think we're going to have some rallies like now, and then we're going to get hammered again. And and your, your friend Peter there is going to be one minute, he's going to be overjoyed. And then the next, he's going to be doing like that Russian hat dance on the street or whatever they call it, right? And then the next day, he's going to be upset that the market's lousy for a couple of days in a row. He's in the heart of it. So he really gets, he's like a ping pong ball. He's getting slapped around all the time because he's right on the floor. 
Mm -hmm. uh, it's easy for me because I sit back in, you know, suburban New Jersey. I'm not like there all the time like I used to be. And most of the money I deal with is my own money. So I have a you have a I have a conviction what I'm doing with that money. So it doesn't it's it, the ups and downs every day aren't, aren't really an issue. And I don't really invest that way at this point anymore. Uh, I'm more of a long term like player. Um, I think you're gonna, I think you have inflation still a really big problem. I, I, I don't, I'm not seeing we're anywhere near a peak. We might be, but even at these rates, it's astronomically high. Uh, I what think interest think, rates. What do you think we're oh, not at a peak in inflation? Oh, I, I just think, I just think we're, we got to see more numbers yet. You're, you're, you, you pumped a lot of money, uh, from 2008 all the way through COVID into this economy. The government has printed a lot of money. And there seemed to be this idea that we could just print money endlessly and that was going to be OK. Uh, it's not. And it's going to we're kind of getting our come up, uh, come up and I think for that whole philosophy. And I, it was really telling for for Yellen to admit she was wrong because politicians never do that. And and, and so she must feel she was really wrong. That's what like is my I think so, my point. If we go back to the late 70s, early 80s, I think it was Paul Volcker that came in that shot interest rates at 20%. Yes. And pretty much forces into a recession to clear out this inflation. Do you think that's going to be, that's, we're going to put that on repeat again and have to go? I, to I, I hope not. It may happen. Uh, it, 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 uh, it will, I would say it's probably going to happen because the Fed is going to be incremental here. And I think right now the horse has left the barn. I think they're chasing a horse. They're going to need like seven, probably six more 50 basis point interest rate increases. I mean, they, they, got a, they got a long way to go. And now they're trying to tighten up their balance sheet and they're starting to, you know, they're printing less money. Um, they may be able to pull it off. Maybe they can engineer this thing. Um, I, I think what they really need to, uh, I, I just, I mentioned this the other day when we met in the city. Um, I think the road to hell is paved with easy credit. And I think your easy credit is dangerous and it always blows up in your face eventually. And for a government, it just takes a lot longer, especially a government as big as the United States. It takes a lot longer for it to blow up. I, you know, I'm hoping we don't have one of those Paul Volcker moments because all the uh, like the younger people are going to be shocked. P old guys like me, we're, we're, we're kind of ready. I don't have any debt. I don't have any you know, variable interest rates. I, uh, you know, we're, we're kind of like, I have a lot of oil stocks and, and I have tech stocks, but I bought them 20 years ago. So it's, it's different. You know, if they go down 20 bucks a share, I'm like, Oh, well, it's, you know, it's not really, it's not that big of a deal at least yet. Um, but I, I think, you know, I think that they're, they're wringing out this inflation is going to be grueling. And I don't, I think the way things look right now, I think we're going to have a slowdown and maybe a mild recession. I think some parts of the economy are going to be greatly affected. Some are not. I think there's a big problem. As usual, we have this skill gap and I don't say it in a negative way. I mean, sometimes you have a lot of people who know how to make hamburgers and people come along and say, I don't want to eat hamburgers anymore. I want to eat uh, Slurpees. And so you need new people to make Slurpees and some people who make hamburgers can make Slurpees and maybe you need to train a whole bunch of new people to make them. And I think this is always an issue. And I think certain skill sets are probably going to prevail over the next couple of months and other ones are going to suffer. Okay. And we're, mm. Now what we're going to do here, we're going to take a, a, a break. I mean, a very quick break. We're going to come back. I want to get into cryptocurrency. We think on these cryptocurrencies. Okay. <laughs> also, real estate. Real estate is a hot thing right now. Yes. Uh, interest rates are kind of cooling it down. But let's see, what, let's see what you think about these uh, cryptocurrencies. Are they on sale? Are there real value being shown? Are they hedged against inflation? Are they hedged against the market? What's going on with the cryptocurrency world and what's going on with real estate when we come back right here on the Prince of Investment?
Now we're going to get into cryptocurrencies and real estate. Cryptocurrency has been very cool this year. Been a uh, it was a hot topic back in 2021. Everybody talked about it as it roared up. Started you know going on with our leader Bitcoin, um, Litecoin, Ethereum. Those are the top ones. Some of the Bitcoins that are out there. They were all over the place. You had Sheeb, you had, I mean, you couldn't get away from the cryptocurrency world. It's gotten very quiet. What does that mean right now coming in 2022? And also we got the real estate market, which is hot. Uh, people houses are building up in equity, but is it really equity if you in a high inflationary environment? But so much more. So I'm here with our guest. I'm here in uh, Alexandria, Louisiana, uh, traveling on the road right now. And we're here with James Ford. And James, what's going on? What do you think about this cryptocurrency world falling out into 2022? Well, very interesting. I think for one, I think the theory that Bitcoin is an inflation hedge is being severely tested right now. So we're going to find out if it really is an inflation hedge. I think a lot of these old coins are are just nothing. And I think a lot of them are going to go to nothing. Um, I think uh, things like I think it was Terra that 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 blew up the other day, uh, which was a stable coin that was kind of backed by other stable coins or other coins i think that just doesn't work so that's like that's been proven but these are the things that have to happen for you to find this stuff out um i think there's uh i think again the major problem and the problem i've had with crypto almost from the get-go is what does the token price have to do with the underlying technology and i think if you find crypto that a token that's used in some interesting new technology or or a or a cool technology that actually does something i think you might have something there i think if the if if the token doesn't really do anything i think you're in big trouble with any of those i think that what we're seeing now is well the market is maybe selling off and you're seeing layoffs on some of the crypto exchanges you're seeing a big cutback in the amount of trading I think this is a huge opportunity because, for example, this afternoon, Chip Elodi mm. uh, said that they are going to now start taking some crypto as payment for those tacos. So you're mm. going to have crypto tacos. <laughs> so now you're getting more into something I'm more I could I could sink my teeth in. Um, so I think, you know, there's there's that. I think there's the 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 sort of the blockchain internet that's probably in the horizon. Some people call it web 3.0. Um, I think that's something to keep an eye on. I, I'm still real positive on blockchain technology. Um, I just, I just, I, yeah, the, the metaverse. And then I think that blockchain is going to, what, what has happened is originally the internet was this diversified kind of free for all. Uh, through companies like Google and Facebook, the internet has gotten centralized and the internet currently is being used to do things that it was never designed to do, which is commerce. And, and that's why when you sign on now, you have 67 passwords. You have to change your password every 15 minutes. Uh, they have to, not only do they call you and give you a code, they call your mother and give her a code, but you have to <laughs> prove first that she's really your mother and you do all this stuff. Like this is nonsense. This is insane. So crypto is going to, blockchain is going to get us out of here. At least that's my plan. I don't know if anybody's listening to me, but that's what I think is going to happen. Um, so I think crypto, I think the, the, the downside of this crypto sell-off is we start to separate you know, the wheat from the chat. We find out what's real and what's not real and what's just crap, as excuse my English, but what's garbage and what's, what's really something substantive. Uh, and we might get a better, we also might get some uh, trading regulations and things like that coming in because you know when these things blow up, there's going to be a lot of screaming from uh, a lot of people who spent a lot of money on things they shouldn't have. Uh, so there's, so we'll probably get some regulation. Hopefully not so much it's going to you know, crush the market. One of the major things I'm worried about is yesterday, the Biden administration said that they were concerned about the carbon footprint of crypto miners. Mm. And these guys, I, I don't know, they're like, the, they're like, everything they touch seems to turn into a mess. So I'd be a little concerned about hearing stuff like that. Um, so like, I'm in, I, I'm, I'm positive in the long run about crypto. In the short run, I'd be really careful and I'd stay away from most of the altcoins right now. All those 
mimey coins and cool like you know shiba dooge and if they don't really do anything you know you're wasting your time with those i, I think it's very dangerous right now uh and that brings us to real estate uh, the real estate market is going to be really impacted by higher interest rates. I mean, there's no doubt. Uh, right now, because of purchasing power has declined with inflation, uh, home ownership is basically as unaffordable as it could possibly be. The affordability index is at kind of the 2008 lows, like it's a mess. Uh, with interest rates going up like this, I would say re uh, real estate right now is one of those things that if you own the real estate already, you might get a really nice ride from inflation with the value going up. You may not be able to sell it, however, very easily for a while. So you're you you I I think I think it's it's going to be really tough for new buyers or buyers to get involved in real estate right now. Um, you may see some weird things happen because what may happen is you may get cash buyers who will pay all cash for something, uh, but they might want to buy things at much lower prices. Mm. And they might look for certain things because a cash buyer is a different. You, you may, uh, other things that are hurting a lot of real estate is in areas like New Jersey where you have really high property taxes. Um, that puts a cap on how much real estate can go up because people have to pay huge property taxes just to get into the house to begin with. So I, I, I mean, as you know, I've, I've always said, well, I think real estate is a great investment. I am not a fan of real estate. I not this market doesn't change it. I just I'm not really a big real estate guy. I just for whatever reason, it, I, I find it too slow and too tedious to deal with. Um, but I do think it's going to be a little tough or it's you, you sellers are going to have a lot of advantages right now because you're going to get high prices whether you can find the buyers or not may be a problem and it just may get real slow for a while it may just have peaked and kind of i don't i don't foresee some big collapse or anything like in 2008 but we may have just we may like like they're hoping with inflation the hopey hopey that it's peaked maybe real estate has kind of peaked for a while and it may just go flat to slightly down for, you know, for four or five years to digest all this uh, kind of wild-eyed speculation that's gone on the last 20 years with real estate, or, or really since 2008, it basically went right back up again. So if you was coming in the real estate market, what would you do? Would you buy uh, or would you just wait, sit on the sideline? The only way I would out? buy is right now is if I'd find some place that I thought was really cool that gave me a really good value. Mm. Like, for example, and this doesn't mean I'm going to go out and do it tomorrow. If you come from New York City, you're near another city. That city is Philadelphia. Philadelphia is less than 100 miles from New York City. As a New Yorker, if you go to Philadelphia, Philadelphia looks very affordable compared to New York City. And it has many of the same cool things about New York City, but I mean, but it's different because Philadelphia has its own style. It's a it's a different city. It's not a little New York. It's a it's a totally different place. So I think there's there's like opportunities, like maybe where you are in Colorado, it's very inflated, very expensive. But where you are right now in Louisiana, it may be a beautiful place, and it might be really affordable and really neat. So you got to kind of. I, I think you just have to look around and, and like anything else, you've got to look for those values. I'm, real estate is very local. So mm. I'm sure there's going to be areas that we, for whatever weird reason, we haven't seen a lot of growth. Like maybe real estate that was in oil patch areas and the oil industry was kind of in the dumps for like 10 years. It's only been the last two years or so where it started to pop again a little bit. So you, there may be some areas where, where housing is rel re relatively inexpensive, um, but places like in tech areas where the housing is way over, like crazy, like around San Francisco and stuff, housing is, is not so expensive. So yeah. I, I think like anything else, real estate, you just got to look. And, and, and of course, then the other thing is, particularly for home ownership, you got to like to live there. You can't just buy something because it's, you know, it's a good buy. You got to you got to actually like the area. You, you know, you got to want to say, hey, I like this is a nice place to live. OK. And well, I got to go ask you, James, but we got to run and go um, right now. How can people follow you? How can people get more information? How people can come check you out in New York? Let us know. Oh, OK. Great. Well, I have uh, 
The main way to find me is I have a Facebook page called Unofficial Wall Street. Um, and while you're on there, I would highly encourage you if anybody has a 401k plan or any reoccurring investment plan going on right now, do not let the bear market scare you out of it. Make sure you stick with it no matter what. Um, that's not, that's the most important thing. So when you go to unofficial wall street, it's a Facebook page. You can find me. I have a link to my, I have YouTube. I have some YouTube videos. Uh, I still, I do private tours in New York, private only directly from myself. Um, so I do do a tour every once in a while, which is a lot of fun. Uh, Prince has been on one of my tours. He knows they're kind of nutty. Cause I'm kind of, I'm crazier even than I am on the show when I'm at a tour because I'm not being recorded. So I can say almost anything I want. And, um, so that's a great way. And, uh, uh, I, I, that's the best I'm working on a, a, a crowdfunding project right now. And if you go into my site, you'll see a bunch of stuff about it. Uh, it's kind of interesting. And it's also another interesting sort of alternative investment to buying stocks and real estate and other things that right now might really scare you, or you might want to say, Hey, how else can I make money? There's other ways to make money out there. Okay. Well, y'all got it. James, anything you want to leave anybody with before we get out of here? Uh, it was a pleasure once again to be with Mr. Prince, and I enjoyed our visit to Louisiana. I haven't been there in a while. Um, that's what I like about this show. I get to I get to travel like and not leave my own house. Um, and I just wanted to tell everybody your Prince is the audience is fantastic. And uh, and for uh, what is it? Think our our friends in Hawaii here. I want to say aloha. I don't know how you say goodbye. Uh, and it's always a pleasure being with them and, and having Prince on, invite me on. And I didn't wear my Hawaiian shirt, but I, I'm, I'm with you in spirit. Okay. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls and children, ladies, you are now tuned into the Prince of Investment. And to the next video podcast, cartoon, or whatever else crazy you see us do around the globe, don't forget to hit that like, subscribe, comment, share button. Peace. Be safe. I'm out. And thank you. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.